Oh, hey, what's up, guys? So, have you ever wondered what it would be like to take all of your favorite parts of a long run shoe and basically throw it into, well, one shoe? Uh, and I'm talking about like some of the parts from other companies like Asics and Nike and Saucony and maybe some of the other companies that are out there. Well, I think Adidas has kind of done that with this. The Adidas Adistar CS. And before we get into it, you guys already know what I'm going to ask you to do. Are you one of the people that comes to my channel and watches a video and sees a shoe review and maybe you make a good educated purchase on this shoe based on my videos well please if you guys wouldn't mind please clicking that subscribe button so that way you are always informed on when new content drops and click that bell for notifications that will alert you when new things come about on this channel also at the end of this video if you enjoyed and found this video informative please give this video thumbs up really helps the channel out helps us reach broader audience and uh, really helps just that YouTube algorithm so we can get more people to come to this channel and enjoy running shoes and running quality running material just like you and me so I greatly appreciate it thank you guys again for tuning in and watching so let's get in to the Adi Adi <laughs> Adidas Adistar CS. Weird name, but let's get into it. So this shoe kind of hits a lot of marks with a lot of different shoes. Now this is a incredibly durable and robust shoe right off the bat and it shows it in its weight. It's like I think in my size it's well over 11 ounces. So it's a heavy shoe, but I'm going to get into it and tell you that the marketing be behind the shoe is that this is a shoe designed for those long, slow runs. Long, slow runs. So it definitely kind of limits uh, what the shoe is capable of. I'm going to get into that here in just a second because that does affect my view on its price point. So let's get into the stats and features on this shoe. So I'm going to start in the toe box area first because we do have these overlays in the toe box right up front that not only add some structure to the front of the shoe, but also add a little bit of protection with how thick those are. That's, I mean, it's, it's pretty thick material that's up here. Uh, so it aids in a little bit of protection, but the surprising part for me was with how robust the shoe is, how breathable this toe box is. It actually is surprisingly breathable. I ran in it in some 80 degree weather and I, and I felt the air in, in some relatively thick socks too. Let me also put that out there. Uh, and I felt that the, the toe box was actually breathable. I could feel the air as my foot was coming through its stride. I could feel the air coming through, kind of cooling my toes off a little bit. So it felt really nice. Now, uh, coming up to the midfoot area, there's a couple of things going on, and this is where th traits from other shoes start showing up in this shoe. So for one, it's got the offset angled lacing system, which is very reminiscent of, I believe it's a Nike Vaporfly also does that. So yeah, kind of a little nod there. Um, and it also has a double lace loop system here. You'll see the two green tabs right here. It has these lace loops and on the inside of the shoe there is extra fabric that is attached to the base of the medial and lateral sides of the shoe. So it's very reminiscent of the uh, Nike React Miler 2 where it had the two lace loops that also attached to the medial and lateral sides of the shoe to provide a little bit better lockdown. Now the tongue, it's not a gusseted tongue, so little, eh, not too happy about that, but it is super plush. I mean, super plush. This might as well just be a pillow sitting on top of your foot. So it actually reminds me a little bit of the Saucony Triumph 17, uh, where it had that super plush tongue to it. This is very reminiscent, it feels very much the same. So when these laces kind of tie down on top of your foot, you don't really feel feel it on top of your foot because you got like this giant pillow sitting on top. Not a bad thing. Again, shoe is aimed for that long, slow run. So you're looking more at comfort than you are at like speed and agility, right? 
Uh, so that is something that is is kind of funny. You know, it comes from a, a sock knee shoe. And then this uh, this is a part that I thought was really cool. If you actually look right up here at the lacing system, right here, there's a couple of extra loops right here that you can really dial in the lockdown of the shoe. So if you want it to be, you know, maybe have your runner's loop a little bit lower or higher, however you feel like works for this shoe, you can customize that lockdown uh, at the top of your foot with all these holes up here. And again, I'm gonna bring this up because Nike React Miler 2 had three different holes up here that you could customize the lockdown of the shoe. So again, there's seems to be a lot of traits that I'm mentioning from the React Miler 2. So please don't take that as like, oh, it's the carbon copy of React Miler 2. No, it's not, it's not. Um, so going into the heel cup area back here, uh, nicely padded. It's not overly padded though, which is kind of a surprise because you have like this super plush tongue and yet the padding that's around the heel collar is moderate. It's moderately padded, um, but it does work well. It does lock down really well and it's a very stout heel counter. So overall, the upper just has a lot of traits from a lot of other running shoes going in it right here. Uh, that it's kind of like, wow, it's almost like the best of some of these other long, easy day running shoes. Um, now going in, now I will say fitment wise, before I get into the midsole, fitment wise, toe box, nice and wide. You can definitely splay your toes out. I went true to size on this, no problems at all. Plenty of toe space, uh, you know, not only to wiggle your toes around, but lengthwise, you got some toe space in it. And again, the, the comfort over the top of the foot, the lockdown is pretty good um it's it's not fantastic but again you've got this super padded tongue and i'm not really used to that so um so that may kind of affect it but i mean i never had any heel lift coming out of the the heel pocket here so just kind of keep that in mind so going on to the midsole here we've got repetitor foam which is a foam that i think adidas needs to be using more than light strike uh, Adidas, if you're watching this video or any one of your representatives are watching this video, please use this foam in a lot of other shoes and instead of Light Strike because it's definitely better than Light Strike. Um, not Light Strike Pro. Light Strike Pro is fantastic. Regular Light Strike is a brick. This is definitely better. Um, and, and, and Repetitor, not Repetitor Plus. I'll get into that here in just a second. Repetitor. It's good stuff. It, it's good stuff. It's not, so the midsole stack height here, it's about 31 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. You got 37 millimeters of stack height in the heel for a six millimeter drop, uh, which is perfect. I love that for easy days. I think that's like a perfect offset. Five, six millimeter for an easy day shoe is, is, is to me, it's like perfect. Um, now back here, you'll notice that you have this green foam back here that also goes through the medial side all the way up to the arch area. This is Repetitor Plus. Repetitor Plus, which you would think would be a softer foam, is actually a firmer foam. And anyways, it, it basically is more of like a heel cup. It's this, this foam is not exactly underneath your foot. It's more of a heel cup. So it just kind of cups around the heel of your, your foot to provide some stability. And that's why that, that foam is a little bit firmer back here. Uh, and then again, it kind of comes up to the medial section right here, right underneath your arch. And again, it's to provide some extra stability underneath your arch. So when you pronate, um, it's supposed to help, you know, kind of keep you aligned and straight going forward. Uh, that is the purpose of the shoe. The CS, the Audi Star CS, CS stands for comfort support. So it's supposed to be a little bit more comfortable than the regular Audi Star, and it's also be supposed to be supportive as well. And I think they kind of did that with this shoe. Uh, but the the actual repetitor foam that's underneath your foot is definitely more compressive than Light Strike, but it's definitely not quite like say a Hoka material, uh, like Hoka ZVA or say Zoom X or well even React because React is depending on the shoe, React is actually can be pretty soft. So it's not exactly that, but it's it's comfortable. I, it's hard to describe because it's compressive enough, but yet it's resilient to get you through those long miles. And I think that's where the shoe kind of really shines is again, long, easy miles. I'll keep repeating that over and over again. But you have a lot of stack height here. You also have a very, very wide base. So this is where, again, 
we start talking about other shoes. You start talking about Hoka in this case. Very reminiscent of like a Hoka Bondi, Hoka Clifton type of design where it's just wide from forefoot all the way through to the heel. Even in the midfoot area, it's still very wide to provide a very nice stable platform for you to run those long, slow miles. You get the point. Um, now, the if you actually look at the front of the shoe, you'll actually notice that on the medial side right here, it actually protrudes out a little bit more than it does on the lateral side over here. And that again is to help provide some extra support so your foot doesn't uh, over pronate in. You have a little bit of extra foam and extra material to kind of keep your foot straight as you run down the road. And the shoe does a really good job at that. Um, now going on the outsole, you see continental rubber right there, continental rubber and lots of it. It's incredibly durable and it's got a lot of traction. It works well in just about any condition. I've ran into some grassy areas, some gravelly areas, all that kind of stuff. Really, really good stuff right here. There's just a lot of it. Is it necessary? Probably not. But that's also why they put this Grand Canyon of a uh, decoupled groove from beginning all the way down to the, to the back of the shoe. Um, this Grand Canyon type of decoupled groove not only uh, lessens some of the weight of the shoe, which is a really smart idea on Adidas part, but it also actually kind of aids in a little bit of that uh, cushioning because it kind of allows the shoe to compress a little bit more in the center of the shoe, whether it's the heel or the forefoot, it just compresses just that little bit more in that forefoot or in, that, in, the, in the shoe and it, it makes it for a little bit smoother and a little bit more comfortable of a ride. So it just absorbs the impacts a little bit better. It's not necessarily there for bounce like you would see on the Nova Blast where it's got that decoupled groove, but it's definitely there, you notice it. It seems to compress a little bit better, uh, but you have this huge decoupled groove right here. And then inside here, you have the Adidas Energy Drive system, which you'll see is that yellow plate right down there. Now, that plate runs from the midfoot to the forefoot and it keeps that curvature, that rocker in that forefoot, which is very reminiscent of the A6 Glide Ride, which is probably one of the best long run shoes ever created. So, um, yeah. So again, Adidas kind of looking at the, the, the riding from all of the other companies and saying, well, let's take a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this, and let's kind of pack it into one shoe. Now, the weight is the only side that's kind of on the negative side of this shoe, but again, it almost kind of helps you run slower because it's a little bit heavier. And I kind of appreciate that a little bit because sometimes I have a problem with that. If I run in a shoe that's too light but maybe made for those long runs, I want to run fast. And in this shoe, I can go, you know what? No, no, I'm going to pull it back because it's, it's slower. And I'm okay with that. Like, I am perfectly okay with that. So, uh, that being said, the, pro the other problem that I have with it is the regular MSRP price for this shoe, which is $160 for this shoe. Uh, I didn't pay that much for it. Uh, I was able to pick the shoe up for $64 on various Black Friday deals where it was not only discounted, but you could use an additional discount code on top of it. So I got these for $64. So almost $100 off of these shoes. At that point, worth it, worth every penny. But at $160, the problem that I have with it is it's not a very versatile shoe. It's not a shoe that is made to go for those faster efforts uh, for, you know, maybe doing some interval workouts or, you know, some tempo runs or something like that. It's very much a limited shoe to doing those longer, slower runs. Now, I definitely would recommend this shoe for somebody that is a heavier runner. I think you're going to take advantage of the repetitor foam that's in here. I think you're going to appreciate the stability that's in this shoe um, to kind of help you, especially if you're like, just getting into doing some longer distance running and you're looking for a long run easy day shoe um, I think this can fit for for a lot of like heavier guys like me um, but if you're maybe a lighter weight runner this shoe might be a little bit too firm for you you might want to go with something a little bit softer but again at $160 I look at shoes like like this right here the Zoom Fly 5 and I'd say well for $160 
I'd rather get the Zoom Fly 5 because it's a little bit more versatile. It can still do like those kind of slower, easier efforts, but I can also pick up the pace in this thing and I could, technically I could race in this thing if I wanted to. This is just, it's, it's, it's a one, one trick pony here. It's just one solid, long run, easy day, like super slow, you know, just racking in the miles type of shoe. So versatility wise, I just don't feel like this is a very good shoe. But anyways, guys, that's it for the Audi Star CS. If you guys like the video, again, please click that subscribe button. It's really going to help me and the channel out. Also, uh, click that bell for notifications. And as always, oh yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate it. And as always, guys, enjoy the run.